Hello and welcome to the first video for week two. Week two is focusing on infinite series, but now we're extending the infinite series from what we did in week one to talk about infinite series as functions. So let's start in that direction with two examples, and these are examples we already introduced in week one as important series. The first was the geometric series. We said the geometric series had a common ratio r, and it converged when the common ratio r in absolute value was less than one. But we can think of that common ratio r as a variable, so in more conventional notation, let me write it instead of r as x. So here's the statement of what we already have to the geometric series. It's that the sum n equals zero to infinity x to the n equals one or one minus x, as long as the absolute value of the common ratio x is less than one. But this is a function. We can put different values of x into it. We get different values out of it. It's in fact this function, familiar function, a rational function, one over one minus x. It's just a new way of expressing that function. So we can think of this infinite series as a function. And it has a domain given by exactly this condition. So its domain is all numbers between negative one and one. So what we're already doing with geometric series was already talking about series as functions if we just do a little reinterpretation of what we meant with the common ratio and treat that instead of a common ratio r as some variable x. The same is true for the zeta series. We said that the zeta series converge when the exponent is strictly greater than 1. And we even wrote this down. I said that these related to a famous function called the zeta function. So we already sort of did this interpretation. If p is the variable, then zeta of p is the value of the sum n equals 1 to infinity, 1 over n to the p, and it has a domain for certain p where the function converges. So this, this gives us an idea that if the terms in an infinite series involve a variable, the variable r in as the common ratio in geometric series, the variable p is the exponent in zeta series, or whatever other kind of variable, then we can think of a function defined as an infinite series depending on that variable. And the first thing we typically ask about functions is what their domain is. And now domain is entirely a matter of convergence. Assuming that the uh, terms are well formed and we don't have any division by zero or anything sort of strange going on in the terms, the thing that determines the domain of this function is where it converges. Domain becomes exactly the same question as convergence. In this course, we're going to consider something called power series, a particular type of function expressed as an infinite series. And you can think of these as extended polynomials. I can write a polynomial in sigma notation. P of x is the sum n equals 0 to d, where d is the degree of the polynomial, and some coefficients, cn, times some power of x. I can write any polynomial this way. The maximum power, d, will be the degree. And if I just replace this d with infinity and let this sum keep going, then I get an infinite series. So I'm going to get a function that can be written sort of as an infinite series. These are called power series because the variable shows up with various powers, various exponents. So you can think of power series as, in some ways, infinite degree polynomials. We use the same notation or the same terminology as polynomials. The numbers cn are the coefficients, much like they were with polynomials, and each uh, term of the series is still called a term, much like we also talk about terms of polynomials. And this difference between coefficients and terms is going to be quite important in what we do over the next few videos. So this is what we just said about power series. This is not quite the most general form we use for reasons that I'll get to very, very shortly in this video. It's often useful to center power series at a certain point. So if I have some number alpha, I can express this instead of powers of x as powers of x minus alpha. And we're going to call alpha the center point of that infinite series. So this form is going to be the most general form of a power series that we're going to work with. And again, there are some particular advantages. Uh, I'm going to throw this up on the left here because we're going to refer to it for the rest of the video just for reference. So this is on the left up here. The most general form of a power series with coefficients cn centered at the real number alpha. I said that where a series converges determines its domain. 
So the convergence of power series of these particular series have very nice behavior. So if I have a power series centered at alpha, then there's some real number r called the radius of convergence. And the domain is always going to be a distance out from the center point. So it's, you have your center point, you can go left and right on the number line, distance r, to get a, a domain. And the domain, the, the place that a power series will converge is always going to be a set of this form. It's always going to be determined by radius of convergence. Uh, it's possible that it converges everywhere, in which case we say the radius is infinity. We think about going out arbitrarily far from the center point alpha. In this case, the domain is all real numbers. So radius of convergence with the shorthand, radius equals infinity if we want convergence for all real numbers. For calculating radius of convergence, we have some very, very nice methods. The most general method, which I'm not going to go over here, is to use the ratio test. The ratio test will always give you a radius of convergence by calculating the limit in the ratio test, setting it less than 1, and using that to determine the radius of convergence. However, if the coefficients are non-zero, we have a much more direct way to do it. And so this is going to work for certain series. It doesn't work for all series. There are some series where there are repeatedly coefficients which are zero, we'll have to go back to the ratio test. But if we have a series where the coefficients are all non-zero, we can calculate the radius of convergence quite directly with this limit. Notice these are CNs, so it's just the coefficient here. We don't have the entire term. We don't have the x minus alphas in this limit. We just have the coefficient. Again, distinguishing between the coefficients and the term is, is really important terminology an important conceptual break in understanding what we're doing and what we're talking about when we talk about Taylor series.